Hello, my name is Jupiter Hadley, and basically today I'm going to be doing another GameMaker Studio tutorial. This one's going to be for a platformy game. Um, so I'm going to do this a bit differently. As you see, I already have a lot of the stuff pre-made. And basically I'm just going to sort of walk through the code and tell you how I've gotten as far as I've gotten. So I'm just going to show you what I've done. Uh, so a start title, basically I went through this in a different video, so if you want to learn that again, it's in a different video. But, yeah. This is a little, like, platformy game. There's double jump. You change the way you're looking in each direction. You can collect these little, I'm going to call them gems, these little gem things to get to the next level. So, yeah. I'm just going to show you how to do that. Um, so, I'm going to start off with my object player. Uh, basic, er, yeah, my object player. Basically, for your object player, just as a sort of side note, what you want to do is have two different images of it, image 0 and image 1, and they're just, um, you know, reverse versions of each other so that you can look different ways depending on which way you're moving. So, that's the first thing you want to do when you create your sprite. Um, so yeah, under the create, we're going to have a bit of code. And this is just a little bit of code. All of this, by the way, is going to be in code, and all of the code might be in the description. Very well organized, hopefully. So, yeah. Um, under the um, object create, we have these three different lines, and the first line, image underscore speed, basically sets the sprite so that the first image that you see is zero, which was like, you know, there's two images, as I just said before, so that it can look different ways, and this is just sort of putting it at one image, so it doesn't just blink back and forth between the two and keep animating, which is not what we want. Um, next, the V speed basically resets a variable that we use, uh, the vertical speed, just setting it at zero. And the jump is defining a jump, which we, again, use later in code. So we just need to define these things so that we can use them later. And we define them under create. Next, <coughs> next we have um, step. And I'm going to play around with some stuff in step as well. But here is the code in our step event. Um, this green right up here, the double slash, double slash in code basically is like a little comment area. And anything you write there doesn't affect the code, so I just have notes around. So, this first bit, basically, um, it's just gravity and falling. Basically, if there's a space below our player, uh, we want gravity to affect the player so that the player falls. Uh, and it also, like, affects how it jumps, how much gravity is weighing down on a player. And if there's a platform, we don't want him to jump, or we don't want him to keep falling if there's a platform. Because then he'd fall through. So, yeah. The reason I have gravity at 6, um is because I like the gravity at 6. Basically, um, the higher your gravity is, the more gravity is pushing down on you, so the less high you can jump. Whereas, the lower the value is, the more your character will float. I'm just going to show you that. If we had it at, like, 0.1, well, 1.0, and we played it like that, start, our jump, one jump isn't quite a full block, two jumps wouldn't get us up on top of that block. So, you know, I thought that gravity was a bit too harsh there. And then on the other side of the spectrum, if we have 0 0.01, that's <laughs> pretty much no gravity. Um, our character, see how long it's taking to even get to the ground? Our player will basically float until it hits something. So... And, yeah, that's that's a jump. So, yeah, basically your player floats and takes forever to get back down. So, you might want to tinker with that until you get it however you want. 0.6 seemed to be good for me. So, that's what I used. Um, we're defining our jump tab 2 so that we can double jump later. Um, this whole gravity direction equals 270. Um, that's basically saying so that 270 the number that we're using, makes it so that our player falls towards the ground. Now, if you pick, like, if you pick, like, or put, like, 90, instead of, it's in degrees, so if you put 90, instead of it falling towards the ground, it's going to fall up. Well, I'm stuck on the block because I fell up. Um, but, yeah, see how I rose straight off the bat? Basically, it'll have you fall up instead of falling down. Um, zero is would make you fall right. Uh, 180 would make you fall left. But, I'm okay with 270 for now, because I want to fall down. Next, this bit of code does exactly that. Limits falling speed. Um, or your terminal velocity. 
Um, basically, it makes it so that your player doesn't keep accelerating as it falls, and you know, keep accelerating would mean it keeps going faster and faster. It just falls at a common vertical speed of 10. Um, next is double jumping with both up and W, with both the up arrow um, and W. Because people use WASD, I don't, I use arrow keys because I'm a noob and I use a computer with a I use a laptop. A computer with a keyboard. Well, all computers have keyboards. Um, but yeah, so basically, this is, this bit is just your up key, and this bit is just your W key. So, it's just setting them both so that they both do the same thing. And every time we jump, it takes away one, and we go at the vertical speed of six. So, Next is movement, which is exactly that. It's movement. Um, this is, again, your right arrow key. This is your D key um, for WASD. And it moves you four pixels. Yes, four pixels that way. And also the image index equals zero. means we start off with our zero image, which is going right. And then after that, when it goes left, or when we use A to make it go left, it switches to its other picture which is of it facing left, so it faces the right way. That's important to conclude, or include, not conclude. And that's it for our object step, and I know that was probably a lot, but yeah, you need it. Um, next is our collision. We have another event, which is collision with object wall. Now the wall is just, you know, the little wall all the way around and the different platforms. So in that code, we just have this set so that when we counter it, we don't go through it. Um, and when we fall on top of it, we just don't keep going through it. It stops our speed completely. So, yeah, that's needed so that you don't fall through the wall, because that would be annoying. Other than that, the only thing that else that we have is our little gems. And these are our gems. And basically, when the player collision, it destroys the gem, because you'd want it to destroy the gem. And then in this code... Um, so it's exactly what it says. It lets us count how many gems are in a room and go to the next room when collected. So, there's two ways that you can really put gems in a room. You can either put in five gems and set a piece of code that says there are five gems in the room when there's zero out of five, we move to the next room. But it's easier if you do it this way, because basically what it does is it doesn't matter how many gems are in the room, but when it gets to zero, it'll transfer you to the next room. Um, so if you decide, oh, I want five gems today... And then you come back tomorrow and you're like, oh, five looks like a little too much. I actually only want three gems. That's okay. You can just delete a few of the gems and it'll still take you to the next room when you collect the ones that are in there. So it's just a simpler way of doing it, really. Um, I didn't make any changes to object key. But so now I'm just going to sort of create a level. We have room two here, which is already outlined with our wall. Our little player is already sitting there. I like them to fall a little bit when they enter the room. But it's just as simple as grabbing a wall. You can just put in different platforms, and I, don't know, I probably want him to be able to get up to that platform, so maybe I'll do a jump a bit like this. I think he can jump that high. Then. Oh, click, click, click. So, yeah, and then we can just um, throw in some gems if you want to throw in some gems. I'm not because I don't have a third room for him to go to. But. It's pretty simple. Um, this way, this bit of code, I've looked at a few YouTube videos where some of the code, basically, if you, like, hit up here, or if you hit it just right in the corner, you'll get stuck. Um, this way, you won't exactly get stuck. Currently, there's two gems in this first room, and once you collect the two, you move on to the second room. So, that's fine. I can add in more gems in the first room without changing my code, which is awesome. That was an issue I was finding, so I fixed it. So if I want like another gem here, like three up here, I can just add those in. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. If you want, you could add it. Um, uh, you could add a different score for each of these little dots that you collect. I have another video about how to add score to stuff once it's collided. Um. So it's pretty simple. Um. This is basically just some stuff you can do for a platformy game. I should, I keep saying I'll have more tutorials out eventually, but then I don't have them out. But the more I'm bugged, the more I tend to get stuff done. Um, other than that, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope it helped you out. I hope it helped you out. Um, 
please leave a comment if you have any questions. I do better with like a legit picture or a little video of what's wrong as opposed to you just sort of copying and pasting in the error code you have. No offense or anything, but I need to see a little more than that because I'm more of a visual person. And, you know, if you need help, let me know. I'll see what I can do. Um, please like this video if it helped you at all. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching. Bye!